still remember exactly how we started out back then. Basically, it was all there. Cars, a workshop, garages, gas, ramps, everything you needed to get into the racing business big. We just had one problem. We needed some hot drivers. Drivers who were prepared to risk their necks for us. So we did it the right way and organized a kind of qualifying test. We wanted the best, and we weren't gonna settle for less. Crash day leak, when an ignition key was turned. More cash burnt up in a second than my wife can spend in a year. <laughs> hey, you know what I'm talking about. You give a woman a credit card and before you know it, all your money is going down the drain. You either keep that cash flowing steadily all the time or you'll lose them. <laughs> Women, family, friends, all of them. They don't want anything more to do with you. So you make damn sure you're never short of cash. That's what I did. And that was my job. And believe me, I was the best bosses could get for the job. crew were responsible for the organization of the garage and building the stunt elements. The shop was uh, just a front. In Tony's shop, we got the money back that we'd paid out previously to the drivers as prize money. Yeah, some of it, anyway. Then we put all the cash back into the construction of new stunt elements. Big ramps, small ramps, loops, you name it. Like, we built a course for our up-and-coming talents that consisted entirely of small ramps. That's where they gained their first experience in the league.
first, the idea with the DVDs didn't go down too good with the bosses at all. Too much publicity. It took a while for them to realize that the sales of the videos indirectly affected the income from the betting offices. The more videos we sold, the more the dimwits shoveled their money into the betting offices. From there on in, we were on a roll. Man, we made so much cash, it was like the whole world belonged to us. Hey, remember Mansfield Speedway? Even before the track was officially opened, we organized a race there. People loved us for having ideas like that.
Flat Shoals was ideal for our purposes. Remote, lonely, not much more than a wide place in the road, way out in the middle of nowhere. A good place to uh, solve problems. If anybody caused us trouble, Flat Shoals was a solution. You just had to know what you're doing and give the farmers a couple of bottles of spiked booze to make sure that they slept well. Pigs don't ask questions about what they're being fed, but farmers do. And if farmers ask questions, you can be sure that you're gonna have to spend the whole damn night solving even more problems. Yeah, races were held in Flat Shoals too, of course. Like uh, the off-road stage race, for example.
With all that money, it was clear that sooner or later someone was going to try to take a slice of the pie. You always have small losses, especially where cash flows. Here and there, people pocket a little on the side. Hey, what the heck? We took it into account and nobody minded much. But when bets were manipulated by people other than us, and drivers were obviously being bribed, it was time to fire a warning shot. Pretty soon, we had two guys in our sights that had had their fingers in the till just a little too often. Then, it was just a matter of finding a driver who'd teach the two a lesson, somebody trustworthy and expendable. Hold the Flag was one of my favorite events. 
It was just a matter of finding a big yellow smiley face out in the field and taking it through the checkpoints. When Tony turned up with the thing for the first time, we all wondered if he was going nuts. <laughs> I mean, just imagine it. You come to work one morning and there's this big yellow thing standing out in the yard and grinning at you. At the time, we didn't have a lot of time to discuss it. The bosses were breathing down our necks because of the lost betting income, so we used it. Yeah, looking back, it was a good idea. That grin turned out to be an unexpected gold mine, and we were back in the boss's favor. She was cut in the 
didn't have too much trouble with the cops. I only remember one time I really got worried. Due to the business with the bribes, we still had a couple of packages we needed to dispose of in flat shoals. Everything was prepared and it looked like it was just going to be another routine run. Man, you plan everything carefully. Fill the tank, make a couple of sandwiches for the journey, and then the cops tow you away because you parked in a no-parking zone. And all because your wife forgets to buy tomatoes and you want to be a good husband. Ah, luckily, the cops towed the car straight to the pound. Boy, if they'd opened the trunk, we'd have been screwed. We had to get the car out of there as fast as possible. My face was known all over town, so only one of the drivers really could be considered for the job. So we thought we dealt with two of the black sheep, but evidently we hadn't got the message across. There were still a couple of no goods out there who just didn't want to get it. The solution was a knockout race. Nobody liked driving with a bomb in his car that exploded if he was placed last in a lap, especially if he had a skeleton in the closet and knew that Tony's crew could rig his car or its protective armor plate anytime they liked. Drivers who hesitated made themselves suspicious from the onset, and those who did take part could never be sure just how much we knew. We reckoned on the drivers getting nervous and making mistakes.
rules are rules, okay? Drivers who wanted to get into the professional league had to complete a bomb run. Anyone who was crazy enough to take part had to drive a fully tanked iron horse with a bomb attached to the roof. This bomb was equipped with a velocity fuse. If the car fell below a minimum speed, it blew up. Easy as that. Believe me, wild horses couldn't have gotten me in that car. The situation had slowly returned to normal. The bets were running out favor again. And everyone knew what would be in store for them if they attempted any double dealing. Everyone was happy, but I'd been hired to squeeze the maximum profit out of this enterprise. The first thing I did was to get Tony to upgrade the driver's arsenal and organize new cars. When we set up the professional league, we had to offer people more than just a couple of ramps. Machine guns and missiles were the start. But we were careful. The improved cars and above all the missiles were only given to people we trusted. Give me kind of speed, the 